In this video, I'll be demonstrating two derivations in multiplace predicate logic. Both of these derivations require us to understand how existential instantiation and universal derivation work, in that we have uh, to instantiate multiple slots of a predicate, and they both also have a little test on that e.g. puzzle, where you have to do a universal derivation to the right thing such that you can existentially generalize to get the contradiction you need. Okay, so show conclusion, uh, assume ID. So this problem, um, this, this is actually a really nice question. It will demonstrate uh, the two sort of core skills, uh, but I will also make use of my one note in the background to sort of just take some extra notes uh, when I actually need it. So if you look at uh, what I have in line two, it's a universal. Premise two are also universals. It's line, it's premise one that matters. Now, always pay attention to what the main operator is. Take some time and stare at it. But the main operator for premise one is the existential. So immediately I just take premise one and I e i uh, to i. Now what that has done for me is it's changed all the x's to i. But the predicate that matters for me right now is the d predicate. Okay, so if you look at the d predicate, uh, it says uh, for all y, uh, d y a i b y. Now the nice thing about the d predicate in line three is the first slot of it and the third slot of it are y's that are pinned to the universal, right? You can see that they're still pinned to the universal. But the second slot, the middle slot, this a of i, that is actually perfectly fixed. And that's really nice because when I look at my premise two, here I can universally instantiate for all w, but that w will change the first and the second slot. And that's nice because to match this d predicate to this d predicate, I now know that this second slot has to be the same as this second slot, which is a of i, which means I immediately know that I should take premise two and ui all the w's to a of i. That matches the middle slots. So here they're actually on top of each other. You can see that matches the middle slots perfectly. Now I could ui at line four. It says for all z, and then I have a z back here. But I don't know what to UI it to because this thing isn't fixed. It's still um, waiting to change from the Y. But fortunately, this UI on this Y will change slot 1. And slot 1 on line 4 is fixed to AI. So now I know what to do. Remember, the golden rule is EI first, UI to match. Nothing changes in multiplace predicate logic. You just actually have to match um, more carefully. So I'll take 3 UI and I also do A of I so that I match both slot 1s of the D predicate. Now you can see the pattern on line 5. Line 5 I have, oops, sorry. I have A of I, A of I, B, A of I. On line 4 I have A of I, A of I, something that I can change it to. So obviously I'm just going to change Z to match, and I get 4 UI to B of A of I. And once they're stacked on top of each other, it's very nice and easy to see that these are a perfect match. So I have 5, 6 modus ponens, and that's it. Now, what I've come down to is the puzzle. Okay, so I actually... Hmm... Okay, so let's move this over. So I'm actually going to write the puzzle down and sort of show you how to do it on uh, by hand, which I actually tried to show you last time. Uh, so here on line two, uh, sorry, on line seven, I have this negation. There exists a Z, F, Z, B of Z. Uh, so what I really want then to generate a contradiction is I want f blank b of blank, where these two things are the same. Because if I did that, I could just immediately generalize to the existential and I have a contradiction waiting. So what do I have? Well, on line two over here, I have this universal. So what I have is I have f a of a, and then I have blank. This is my alpha and my alpha can change to anything I want. Um, so, uh, actually, I don't like calling that alpha. Let's just leave it as a question mark, because that will represent that it can change to anything I want. Okay, so this is the pattern. 
The trick is you stack them on top of each other and then the slots have to match, okay? So no matter what, the slot down here, what I have, this question mark will have to be of the form B of something, B of something. That's the only way to match this structure here. But here's the clue. It's actually really obvious what I need this to be. This has to match exactly what this is down here, the FAA, but this A of A is fixed. It cannot change. So A of A has to be here, which means A of A has to be here because these have to be the same, which means what do I change this back slot to? I change this to B of A of A. Ba. And that way I get the perfect structure. So stacking it on top of each other, just like I actually did the same trick here on the Ds, it's just that Logic 2010 had them stacked on top of each other for me. Um, that's what makes multiplace predicate logic quite easy. Uh, so I'll take two, and I immediately to u know to ui to b of a of a, uh, and then now I can say a e g, and I'm going to generalize the a of a's, both of them, to, uh, to what? I don't remember. Z. And there you go. 7, 9, id. This is actually sort of why uh, the solutions are sort of uh, useless. Like if you look at these solutions, you'll be like, okay, fine, this is the solve, but I don't know how, you know, we figured out that it's to ui to b of a of a in line uh, 8, or this b of a of i, or anything like that. So these are sort of like the mysteries that, that watching sort of like a video or posting questions on Piazza are going to be very helpful for. So this is a theorem. Um, and I've, in the actual test, I just provided line one just to save you guys some trouble, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so we're going to do uh, what I did for the last video. I'm going to sort of slide this over, and I have this preloaded this time, and I'll solve this on Logic 2010, but I'll also sort of do some notes as I need them. So show conclusion, that's fine, that's the big thing. So again, Theorem, we always stare at the main connective and we ask what it is. So the main connective here is uh, the condi conditional. So we will assume CD and then we'll show consequent, assume ID. Now you didn't have to do it this way. Um, this way is perfectly fine. This is probably the way that most of you will do. But uh, some of you might have actually just gone straight for the assume ID because you know that we can negation of conditional. And then we just take three, simplify left, and we take three, simplify right, double negate. Uh, and we actually end up functionally at the exact same point. So uh, your derived rules just allow you to do these things. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's the same. Okay, so our only two lines that we have are line four and five. Uh, so uh, on line four and five, we just hope to generate a contradiction, and we see how it's going to go. Line four is an M predicate, and line five is the negation of the M predicate. So, so long as we actually get what's inside the M predicates to line up perfectly, we're home free. So, line 4 is an existential, line 5 is a universal, so clearly we want to start with the existential. So, we say 4 EI to I, um, and now we compare lines 5 and 6. The reason why we compare is because we're essentially just staring at um, two universal options. I can UI this one, or I could UI this one. So, if I look at line 5, UI in line 5 will only change the second slot of M. M is the three-place predicate, and the first slot is AW, then X, then Y. So I would just be changing the second slot X. Now, when I look at line 6, the universal instantiation Z would change slot 1 and slot 3. It would change 1 and 3. Okay, great. So which of my slots are fixed? That's always the most important question. What is fixed? and cannot change. In 6, the second slot is fixed. In 5, nothing is fixed. So that immediately tells us that I really should just take line 5 and change my second slot to match the fixed second slot of line 6. So I'll take 5 and I'll UI and I'm going to match the X here to the fixed second slot or middle slot of line 6, which is A of I. Uh, immediately I generate an existential, so I don't even think, I just EI to J, brand new variable, that's fine. And now the two lines that I'm staring at are lines 6 and 8. So if you want to stack them on top of each other, like that's what I've been sort of encouraging over and over again, you can just repeat it. It's, it's a lot easier to look at things when they're stacked on top. Now again, uh, keep touching that. 
Uh, whenever I have this situation, I know that I have to change things. Line 9 will change 1 and 3. Line 8 will change 3. Uh, so what is fixed in line 8? Um, it's the AJAI that's fixed, so 1 and 2. In line 9, it's the second one that's fixed. So this is actually sort of an interesting case, and sort of let me sort of explain why. Um, most of you will probably sort of actually see the solution to this already, but I'm just going to make this sort of uh, as clear as I can. So line 8 says uh, negation, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, a, J, A, I, and then, and then blank, right? This thing's going to change. And then line 9 says M, blank, uh, A of I, and then blank, a B of blank. Okay, where these two things have to be the same because they're controlled by a single quantifier. Now what's interesting is we've already gotten the second slots to match up. So it's like they're not even there. I don't even care. We've actually already done that work. So here, the puzzle that I need to figure out is not really a complicated puzzle at all. Once I eliminate the middle slot because I've already taken care of it, I know that the back two slots need to be the same and the front two slots need to be the same. Well, this one is pinned to AJ, so that means I'm going to have to change this to A of J. But the second I change this to A of J, that means this will be A of J, which means this thing needs to match here. So this will become B of A of J, and that's it. So it's when you put them on top of each other, it becomes nice and obvious. So what I'll first do is I'll change line 9 to B match that A of J we were talking about. And then now uh, I'll do that line 8, oops, 8, and I'll UI to B of A of J, and I'm just following the instructions that I generated over here when I stack them on top of each other and analyze them, and there you go. 10, 11, I, D.